Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks with PremierGuitar.com. We're here talking to legendary bassist Stanley Clark about his gear, and we're going to start by talking about the beautiful basses you've got right behind you, right? Yeah. Well, let's see. The first one, uh, we, this is a new bass that, uh, that I got from Olympic. They just built this for me, and uh, I don't know what to say much about it other than it's a pretty, it's a different sounding Olympic bass. It's mm -hmm. not quite as, uh, uh, it's, I don't know, it's just... How would you describe it, Travis? It's a beautiful work of art. <laughs> yeah, the wood is beautiful, and the sound is a little, it's crispier, tighter. I don't know what they did to it to make it that way, but it's a, it's a, it's, I think this is one of their better sounding basses that I've, that I've come across. So I have that bass, kind of an old, this is, this is a copy of my original Cherry bass that they made for me, and this is a a copy uh, you know the, the, the original was beaten down from 20 25 years of just banging on it the, the, the frets were all beat in and the, it was just a beat up bass with scratch marks and so what they did was they duplicated it they made two for me one was stolen if anybody knows where the other one is please let me know and uh, <laughs> and uh, but I got one left and uh, it's exactly feels exactly like the original exactly and, our and this bass is a tenor bass. It's tuned different. A E G C, that's E A D G. Now the signal gets split with the neck pickup and bridge, pi bridge yes. pickup, right? Can you t walk us through the signal um, chain a little bit? It's pretty much like a signature thing for Stanley. Um, all his basses are designed in stereo where he has a low and high pickup. And we use a custom pre um, preamp made by Olympic, which this is it here, where the uh, top pre preamp is for his high gain and the low preamp is uh, for his low gain and it's split on the base and we use a pi, uh, five pin connector which is typically used in a lighting rig or for uh, hear back systems uh, to run the base and that's basically how he splits the signal. And uh, those go through separate cabinets too then? Separate cabinets, low and high. Um, he used to use 18 cabinets for the low, low end but now we moved over to Ampeg and the 15s handle the low end very well so we're happy with it. And uh, I see a little Fender amp over there. Uh, does one of you guys want to talk about what that one's for? It's always get uh, people's uh, ears up when they see that, uh, how you run a guitar amp with a bass rig. Well, with the high end on this preamp, it has a high pass filter, which allows us to run the high frequencies on the Fender amp, which gives them that nice crunchy rock sound. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about the amps underneath the Fender then? So basically what we're using for amps out of the preamps of the Olympic preamps, we're using um, uh, Ampeg amps, which this is the SVT4 uh, Pro, and it has a stereo input, which allows us to run the low and high gains uh, on that. And then the one on the bottom is one of the older uh, models of the Olympic SVT2, which is a warm tube uh, uh, preamp. And he uses this with his acoustic bass. And you also have a very beautiful upright bass here. Can you tell us a little bit about it? This bass here is a copy of the bass that I had when I was uh, a teenager. Uh, the best bass, one that I'm the most comfortable with, is my original German bass. It's probably now about 200 years old. I don't bring it out on the road anymore. So what I did was I got a company, uh, a bass maker in Japan, I mean in China, that actually copied this. Um, I actually did this through a company called Lemur Music, which is a, a California-based uh, company that deals only in bass gear, acoustic bass gear, and they're very good. And basically what they did was they came to the house and they measured my old bass exact. I mean, every little corner, everything. And so this bass is like an exact copy made in China, and it also is a, has a detachable neck, as you can see here this neck comes off and uh and it goes um it goes into a box that's probably about that big and so i can ship the bass really easily it's under 40 pounds to the bass and it's a good sounding bass for live performance and you know it's funny you know when i when i play uh and we do stages like this or if i'm playing with return to forever bigger stages we're pretty much in a rock and roll environment and basses can get messed up real easy when they're sitting backstage and you got 30 crew guys moving lights and this and amplifiers. So, you know, these basses are, are inexpensive, but they sound really good. And so uh, that's, that's what I'm using here. And uh, how is it uh, amplified? 
I have an Underwood pickup here, which is this pickup here that goes right into the slots of the bridges here. And I go into an Ampeg um, amplifier over here, which he, he explained earlier. And that's pretty much it, you know. And then I use, this is kind of a secret to, to having a good bass sound, which is this EBS box. I think that every bass player should have one of these. Uh, and also acoustic guitar players. It's just a very warm box that allows you not only good EQ and good preamplification, but it also gives you, there's many inputs and outputs, so you have flexibility, you know, to go to a monitor system, go to an amp, you know, it has a, an echo, very sophisticated echo send, you can co connect uh, effects up to it, and very good. And it has two stages, two different sets of EQ, you have an A and a B, thing there so, so you can have preset e, you know eq with just a flip of a switch a and b mutes the bass as well so it's perfect for me and you also have another ebs pedal up here the dyno verb. dyno verb that i use on my acoustic bass okay. sounds really good very simple and sounds really good right, well let's check out what you've got up on the floor then this tc electronic um pedal board is a, a very sophisticated echo unit it's very sophisticated i mean that's something maybe someone would want in a studio the level is very it does a lot of things loops you create your own effects very clean sounding it's great next to it is a pedal made by a guy in germany i don't know his name but it's the best pedal that i own it just it's really clean and really sounds good next to that is the ebs pedals they're, they're my favorite pedals from commercial uh, companies that are out there today and uh, they're just very sturdy, they last long, and they sound good. Uh, my favorite octave divider is definitely the, uh, the EBS pedal. So it's a very good uh, unit. It's very clean, sounds great on the bass, and uh, that sounds great. That's a good octave divider, but I, I actually prefer the EBS one better. Uh, any other little secrets or tricks to nope. your rig? <laughs> no. Just fingers, that's it. Yeah, Technique, right. that's it. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about what uh, kind of projects you have going in the spring and summer before we wrap up? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go out on a long tour with uh, RTF, Return to Forever. And uh, we're going to have a pretty massive setup, a massive tour, and uh, that's going to be great. I'll pretty much have this same setup. It might expand a little bit more. I, I, I don't know. You know, it's hard to tell. But uh, it's pretty much what it is. This is, uh, this is it. But I'm going to go do that this summer. I'm working on another record, um, and uh, life goes on. Yeah. Uh, who's going to be in the lineup for the summer tour? Return Forever, uh, Chick Corea, myself, Lenny White, a guitar player, Frank Mbali, and a violinist, um, Jean Luponte. Did I mention Lenny White on drums? Yes, I did, yeah. And that was Stanley Clark's gear. You're watching PremierGuitar.com. I'm Rebecca Dirks.